I'm Danny Lipford. And I'm Chelsea Lipford Wolf. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And be sure to share with a friend, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. When you have four kids between two and nine years old, what your backyard needs is an awesome play place. Something north of dangerous and south of irresponsible, <laughs> maybe. What do you think so far? Unbelievable. Jessica and Travis moved into this house two years ago with their four young children, Justice, Piper, Kira, and Keen. Well, I envision for our backyard is a place where we can all play together. We love games. Our family's a big game family and sports. We're excited to move in and, and be here, but having four young kids is a lot of activity in a three bedroom house. Really, we were wanting a space outside where the kids could go and burn off energy. So they need something to climb on, to jump off of, to swing, to yeah. anything, anything to like get the wiggles out. And we do want to leave most of the yard open because we also love playing soccer and sports. And so yeah. we don't want to clutter up the yard. And also I would like to be able to send them out there and know that they're entertained, that they're not going to come running back in bored after five minutes because there's nothing to do out there. So I would love to be able to make dinner while they're playing outside after school. But you got a lot to work with here. You already yeah, have done apparently great. a lot of work on it. Yeah, we have the deck and we got some grass down, but uh, it's still not, I think, as kid friendly as we mean it to be or um, a space for them to really have some different activities. So we have two boys, two girls, nine, seven, five, and two. Yes. The boys are physical, the girls want to create and pretend and be imaginative. Role play. Yeah. Well, what kind of ideas do you have on that? What says boyhood more than climbing trees or a fort or something like that? Yeah. So. Oh, a tree fort. Oh, there yeah. Oh, yeah. They would love That's that. That's fun. I haven't yes. built one of those in a while. One of the girls likes to do that. Okay, they, like they love the pretend. Well, I'm part of the creative, <laughs> pretending, okay. imagination oh, stage. Fun. So okay. Any kind of area where they can get creative, use their art skills, okay. or, you know, anything like that to inspire oh. their little imagination. So Chelsea and I begin making measurements to put I together a plan. Okay, five, nine. Okay. Ooh, I grew an inch. <laughs> we'll use the girls' existing playhouse to anchor a small fenced-in area that'll become their own pretend neighborhood, complete with oversized games for the whole family. Then we'll build that treehouse Travis mentioned for the boys just off the deck. Behind it, we'll create a climbing wall with a cargo net on the back side, and opposite the picket fence along the back edge of the yard, we'll put together a balance beam obstacle course. When we return a few weeks later, we're ready to get to work. Chelsea and Jessica begin by moving the playhouse to its new location so they can lay out the fence around it. In addition to their existing playhouse, inside their little fenced-in area, we're going to give them a magnetic tic-tac-toe board, but also I recently built a kid-sized picnic table for my web show that's perfect for Kira and Piper. Oh my word, they will die! They will love that! Okay. If we have the picket fence that runs perpendicular, you know, right along okay. the front of the shed yeah. and bring it out, that maybe we move the house over there. Okay. Have the picnic table kind of love in the it. front and maybe we can use the side of the shed for some kind oh, of game awesome. or something. I love that! Yes! I can see them wanting to plant flowers back there. They're always begging to have their own little garden. This is the perfect spot to do that. Well, let me show you what I have in mind. There's the tree. You have this coming out here about three, about three. We have a little angle that makes it fun. Yeah. And then this would base, the ladder would basically be about the same width as the tree. They can come all the way to the back. Exactly. There's, there's nothing around right, the nothing, back nothing side. Nothing around yeah. the and back then side. It'll make it real simple for us to build. Yeah, oh, well, that's, okay. that's good too. Okay, one more decision. The height of this doesn't matter yeah, as far as I, the building. Well, I think, I think the higher the better. Something north of dangerous and south of irresponsible, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> What a great description of exactly what I'd like to build. I think part of being a boy is that desire for some danger or something exciting. And so I didn't want it to be so low to the ground that it didn't really matter that you were in it or not. I know if Jessica was over here, it would be lower than that we what we'll decide together. Uh, but, that's right. Uh, yeah, higher is more fun. So, you know, I'll try to be the fun mom about that. About that high. 
the image in my mind was kind of like a crow's nest on a pirate ship. Exactly, that's, that's yeah. what my, yeah. Which is yeah. what it reminds me of, so yeah. Something that's like a lookout, they can spy around the whole neighborhood. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. See like the it. approaching enemies <laughs> from far off. <laughs> it sounds like you're gonna be up there. Yeah, well, probably. He's a kid at heart. He's the dad who's out there playing with the kids while I'm making dinner, doing all the boring things. He gets to go have fun with them. He'll definitely be up there. You know, when someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you see kids build their own tree houses. Yes. Or if pretty, I would do it without yeah, your or, help. Or, yeah, well, yeah. I didn't want to say that. But, if I would but, do it without your help, there would just be a pile of wood there a year right, later. Right, exactly. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so so while it. our handyman bear begins cutting the wood for our tree house, Chelsea and Jessica get started cleaning up the playhouse. The playhouse that the kids already had is in great shape, so we're just going to clean it up a little bit. And we're using Armorall because it's going to help re-enhance the colors in the playhouse. Kind of like your dashboard that gets a little sun damaged and you polish it up with some Armorall. It's going to make it look nice and new. It's springtime and that means it's time to get back out in the yard. And whether you're digging a garden or just digging in the yard to plant the tree or a post hole, sooner or later you're gonna have to deal with roots, whether they're surface roots like this or buried deep in the ground, you have to cut them out of the way. Now, the best tool for digging in the ground, of course, is a pointed spade like this. But this tool isn't so great for cutting through roots because the, the root has a tendency to slide off the ends. But you can modify it so that's a perfect root cutting tool by cutting a notch in it. I took a normal shovel, a standard spade, and I used a cutting wheel, an angle grinder with a cutting wheel, to cut a notch. This notch is about an inch wide and an inch deep. And then I used a file to sharpen the edges. So now you've got this really nice tool. To, it's great for digging holes and cutting roots. Just use that notch to cut right through the root, just like that. And this notch is great for small and medium-sized roots, but there's no reason you can't cut it even deeper to cut through even bigger roots. We're creating an awesome backyard play place for Travis and Jessica's four children. While Chelsea and Jessica are creating a fence around the playhouse for the girls' make-believe neighborhood, Travis and I begin building a treehouse for those active boys. But before we can make much progress, a rainstorm shuts us down. Within a few minutes, the rain passes so we can get back to work while it's dry. All right, let's see if we can thread this thing around the tree. All right. Then we can put that other piece on it there. Okay, just set it right on top of it. On top of the board you've nailed in? Correct. Okay. I thought you, I thought someone brought my level over here. Oh, I saw some, I saw it move out of the corner of my eye. Since we want the fence to be level over a long span, we really do need a four foot level and not just the two foot level. And it's an added bonus that it kind of irritates Dad when I take his tools. I need my level over here. <laughs> you know, we have plenty of four foot levels. She really didn't have to use mine. Give, 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 give. What are you talking about? It was here all the time. Uh, yeah. I didn't see it. There's a lot of things you build that you kind of make it up as you go. A tree house is exactly that type of project. One thing, you want to make it safe for the kids, so we made sure that it was supported well from the ground and then went from there. Later, we'll double up these two by fours to create added strength beneath the platform. All right. No, Ready? no, no, I don't know. I'll hold it. I don't want to. Okay. No, but just pull the trigger. Do I push don't or drive. no? Do I push the pressure? You're, you're good. You got enough pressure. There you go. Did it work? Okay, now do it two more times. Okay, nice. it's not as scary as it is. Nice. Nice. She's more competent than me in most areas in life, and so it's no surprise that she just picked up a nail gun and was off and at him. Do you think this is like dad and Travis's like boyhood dream come true? Yes, of course. A tree what fort? boy doesn't want a tree for it? And now he can claim to claim to his sons he built it. Yeah, he'll be like the coolest dad yeah, in the block. Yeah, exactly. You can see it. You know, see it for miles around. It's amazing. <laughs> Jessica wasn't kidding about the kids having a good imagination. Kira gets her play tools out and starts helping us build this fence right alongside us. Way to go. That was We should have had you out here the whole time, Kira. We would have had this done a lot faster. Yeah, that's true. She wanted to be like Miss Chelsea. Once we fill in the floor joists for the tree fort, we can begin installing the floorboard so Travis can try his hand with a nail gun. Kind of a big deal. 
when you're building anything around a tree, the tree keeps growing. So you have to leave a little bit of space for it. You can see we're cutting back the deck boards here. And also these little blocks are not nailed into the tree. This is something that as the tree grows, these can be just knocked out of the way to allow room for the tree to grow. So we're basically just self-supporting it with all of the two by fours that we have around the edge. We're going to make the fence boards out of one by four pressure treated wood. Okay. And so what we have here is a template that we created so that they all will have the same three quarters of an inch okay. little tip instead yeah. of having the point, you know, with That's kids. That's better. Yeah. Okay, I like that. They don't want them to spear their siblings. Well, I'm thankful that the pickets do not come to a sharp point. Knowing my kids, they're going to leap over those. So I'm thankful that no one's going to impale themselves on that. So all we'll do is bring this up flush with the end. Mark, Mark it. it put our saw on 45 degrees okay. and then make the cuts. Okay. So we only have like, I don't know, 50 to go. Yeah, no so. big deal. <laughs> when the girls run out of pickets, they shift gears and begin putting in landscape fabric and mulch for the play area. But then... Kelsey, y'all might as well stop. The, if the rain's coming in strong. Go ahead and knock it off. Okay. All right. We can't quit. <laughs> There you go. All right, better go. It's raining. Let's go. But I'll just need the ladder probably a bit high. Maybe we should have made it lower. Might have been good to finish the, the ladder before you just packed up for the day. I love stumbling on a power tool that I don't have because I pride myself on at least trying to get the latest and the greatest and look what I found today. This is the Ryobi One Plus Compact Blower. Now you may have a leaf blower for your outside like your lawn, but have you ever thought about getting a compact one for say like your workshop, your garage, or your basement? This is perfect. Now I'm going to turn it on so you can hear how loud it is. It blows up to 165 miles an hour. Listen. It's pretty loud, but look, it also has three different settings so you can get the intensity that you need depending upon your project. It works with an 18-volt lithium-ion battery that works with your other Ryobi tools as well. So if you're looking to add another power tool to your arsenal, this may be the one. Rain has plagued the first day of our backyard project with Travis and Jessica, and believe it or not, the forecast for day two is worse. But at the moment, it's dry, so we're pushing to get as much work done as we possibly can. We're beefing up the support for the treehouse with more 2x4s and concrete. Chelsea and Jessica finish installing the fence pickets before beginning one of the outdoor games we're building for the kids. We're going to turn this sheet metal into a tic-tac-toe board for the kids to okay. play with. We're going to hang it on the side of the shed, I like but it. I thought we would paint it with chalkboard paint so that they can use it for whatever they want yes. it for. They will like love that. that. Yes, color on it, write on it. Okay, yeah, awesome. When Chelsea and Jessica open the chalkboard paint, they discover something that often catches people off guard. Black paint sometimes appears blue until it dries completely. Meanwhile, I'm building a simple frame from one by twos to border the sheet metal so the kids' hands will be safe from the metal's sharp edges. Another game we're going to create for this fun backyard is a large version of the popular game Jenga. Now how we're going to make it is so simple in that we're taking a regular pine 2x4, we're going to cut it exactly 10 and a half inches. Now the 10 and a half inches is the exact equivalent of three widths of the 2x4 so that when we make the tower it'll be nice and square and it should be a lot of fun and very easy to make, especially with the simple little guide that I'm putting up or a cutting jig as it's called a lot of times. Then, as I'm cutting it, I won't even have to use this at all because I've got 48 of these to cut. This will really speed it up. All right, Travis, let's go ahead and just set this one. This will be the first one we cut. All right. Boy, I could have carried it by myself, but I'm glad you were there. I did notice Danny's confidence is fairly high. Well, you know, a six by six like that, I could have thrown it up on my shoulder and walked right in. But there weren't any shots of him carrying that by himself. So I thought we would make a little balance beam here. Okay. And yeah. instead of making it straight, which would be too easy, we're gonna turn it a little bit like that. So yeah. I think it'd be kind of cool with these things being at an angle like this. Yeah, yeah. Then we could come back here. We don't want it to be too easy. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> We're notching the top of each 6x6 six six post so we can drop in 4x6 beams between them. 
But before we get too far into that process, ah! uh, we dodged it all well, day long, but I think I'm ready to work inside. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> rain, rain, go away. Chelsea wants to build today. <laughs> That ends day two a little early, but day three starts off with no chance of rain and plenty of work to do. Chelsea's assembling the tic-tac-toe board, while Travis and I wrap up the balance beam the by setting the, the post in concrete. <laughs> yeah, working with concrete. I can't say they were bucket list items, but. Uh... <laughs> Chelsea's moved on to sewing the fabric canopy for the tree house as we finish up the balance beam. Meanwhile, Jessica's sister, Leah, drops by to help out with painting the fence. This should be fun because our project next week will be with Leah and her family just a block away. So this will help prepare you guys for what's to come next week. Yeah, I know. I've been wondering, what, did, what is it like? like it's fun. It, it's so fun. I'm impressed. I did help build this fence. I'm proud of it. Okay, so they're doing kids play stuff in our backyard. Yep. What are they going to do for you guys? Have you well, heard yet? Yes, they're going to redo our patio. It's amazing, like, what can be done in just a few in days, a week. too. Yeah. yeah. But for now, we have to finish this project. While Chelsea and Jessica paint the ends of the Jenga blocks, Travis and I get started on the climbing wall. Basically, it's just an A frame. We're going to have the other section that we built will be uh -huh. where the cargo net is installed. Okay. This is the climbing wall. So, what we're going to do, and all this is treated wood, we're going to use these one by sixes and basically just make it solid. It's going to be pretty heavy, so uh, yeah. that should um, be interesting. Yeah. I get you know, Jess to move that. When you and uh, Jessica move it out, move it back in. When this panel is completely covered, we connect it to the open panel using carriage bolts so they hinge at the top. The cargo net strings across the open side of the frame before we start drilling holes in the panel side for our plastic climbing grips. A bolt runs through each grip and the board to a T-nut on the back side before it's all tightened up. With two bolts per grip and 35 grips on the wall, this takes a little time. But soon we're ready to start cleaning up and tweaking the details to get this backyard ready for the kids. Yeah, I like it. Travis and Jessica had a beautiful backyard. But aside from the soccer goal, there wasn't a lot to occupy their four children. So we put together some projects that would create activities and games that the whole family could do together or the children could enjoy on their own. The balance beam offers some physical challenge, but it's simple enough that the kids' imaginations can fill in the gaps, from a gymnastic event to crossing a dangerous gorge. There's tons of opportunities for make-believe inside Piper and Kira's neighborhood where we've given the playhouse new life and the picnic table is ideal for a pretend dinner party or a real-life game of oversized Jenga. And of course, the magnetic board for tic-tac-toe and the other games will offer hours of entertainment. The climbing wall and cargo net will also challenge their imaginations while testing their physical skills. And the treehouse? Well, what kid doesn't want a treehouse to escape to occasionally? Since we moved in two years ago, we've just wanted a backyard that the kids could just go and play in and, you know, be outside and release their energy, especially after school and at those times where, um, you know, it's just tough to be uh, in the house. And so now they have just a great place. A where, dream yard. Yeah, lots of things to engage them and uh, they're gonna, you know, I mean, their friends are gonna wanna come over and play a lot, I have a feeling, because this I've is I've already had really requests. Cool. When yeah. is it done? When can we see? Here we have the balance beam, the play area for the girls, the climbing wall, the tree fort. I just, I'm blown away, honestly. I've watched, you know, all the home improvement shows, but to actually be able to fire a nail gun or use the power sander, it is empowering and it does show you like, it's not as intimidating as you might think it is. Yeah, something that was neat about everything we did here was there wasn't any prefabrication. Just about the only thing in the backyard that arrived from a store were the grips on the climbing wall and everything else is wood screws and nails and just your imagination. You know, every week I talk about how much fun I have working with great homeowners. Well, obviously this week we had a lot of fun because every project we worked on was all about fun. But the real payoff is seeing the kids' faces when they realize all the good times they have ahead of them in their own backyard. Hey, I'm Danny Lifford. Thanks so much for being with us here on today's Homeowner. 
Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.